We will now have the congregation hymn on page 465. Jesus loves me. First and second verses. of our guest by Master Ezra Bass. Good morning, church.
Thank you for coming out this morning to help us celebrate Children's Day. We are working on, I mean, we are working for the Lord and we want to continue to pray for God, for God's children. Thank you for coming and have a blessed day. Good morning. Good morning. At this time, we would like 
like to celebrate our youth and their accomplishments of ending the school year and recognizing the grades that they have been promoted to for the next year. So at this time, would all the children who will be going to kindergarten, including Amir Cheney and Leilani Smith, please stand.
We will now have the worship of tithes, offering, missions, and com community development fund by Reverend Dr. Keith J. Martin. Give these young people another hand.
Amen. Amen. We will now have the intercessory prayer by Master Christopher Edwards.
God will keep J. Martin. Version, 
from verses 35 down to 41. It'll be a little bit bigger to your young people because we did part one last week. So it means, this is Mark, fourth chapter, verses 35 to 41. And the same day, when the even was come, he saith unto them, let us pass over unto the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship. And there were also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. And they awake him and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, What manner of man is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? May be seated in the presence of the Lord. And the tag for this morning's message is change works for me. Part two. Change works for me. Young people, you might remember last Sunday, I said that the writer of this gospel is John Mark. John being his Jewish name. And Mark is his Latin surname or his last name. And that his mother was wealthy. She was a prominent Christian in the Jerusalem church. And Mark is the earliest of the gospels. And Mark's style is one that is based on action. It is brief and to the point. You remember Mark was writing this gospel when he was in Rome. And the Romans were very busy people. They loved power. So what Mark did in his writings was he made sure that he talked about the things that Jesus did. And he does it so quickly, unlike the, uh, the other gospel writers, Mark doesn't spend a lot of time describing things. He gets right to the point. And it's full of action. In part one, we talked about the part when the word says the disciples cried out to Jesus, don't you care? Why are you allowing this? And then the fact that he rebuked the storm. And, and young people remember that I said the, the, the translation of the words, peace be still, was like Jesus telling the storm to shut up. Yeah. Now remember I told y'all, shut up is not a nice thing to say, it's not polite. But Jesus didn't have to be polite. You, you gotta remember that God gave Satan permission to have his will in this atmosphere. Yeah. He was had permission to do things down here, but that permission is limited. Satan has to go to God for anything that he wants to do. And Jesus knew that the storm was gonna come. He knew the source of the storm. So when he was like, peace be still, it was like him telling the devil, sit down and shut up. And that's what we have to do when we're dealing with the enemy and storms come up in our lives. But you see, the, the change works for me, part two, is a reminder that in our lives, we are going to face change. A child who was in nursery school or in daycare that's now been promoted to kindergarten is a child who sees change. A child who goes from the first to the second grade is a child undergoing change. And, and when they finally get to third grade, you will find many children, when you ask them how was school, they'll tell you, I'm tired of school. And it's like when you're tired, you just start in third grade and they will say to you, it's a lot of work. The teachers expect too much because they went from just doing the easy things, the recognition of numbers and things like that, to having to actually start to put full sentences together into a paragraph. And for them, it's like, wait a minute, I want to go back 
to when I can watch Gracie's Corner and that's all that's going to be expected of me. I want to go back to the ABC song. I want to go back to counting 100 being a big deal. But see, change is going to take place. And young people, I tell you something. Change is not only interesting for you to deal with. Adults have the same problem. And you see, when you are a child and something changes, you can learn how to adapt because you don't know any better. You just take things as they come until you start to have a little bit of history to compare it with. But as adults, adults are used to getting one thing done, and if somebody comes by and says, we're going to do it differently, you want to watch adults freak out? You have it after they've been doing something for five years and somebody comes through and says, we're now going to do it this way. You want to watch people have a problem with change. But when you realize that change works for me, it's because you step back and understand that the one who is in charge of change is the one that can make sure that all things work together for good for them who love the Lord and they are called according to his purpose. So we and you find out that Jesus was saying to the disciples, look, the congregation is sitting in an area known as the name. And the name, when you look at the Latin part of that, is navis. And what it, when you think about, well, what a name, that sounds like maybe. Well, yeah, because the root word of maybe comes from that. And so when they were sitting there listening to Jesus, Jesus was teaching in parables. He was letting them know what's up, but he was only going to teach and preach as much as they could bear. So when it was time that the people were like, okay, we got enough, there's nothing more that we can observe, uh, absorb, Jesus said, okay, let us go to the other side. That was change. You were going from this point to this point. And remember now, these were fishermen, professional fishermen. When Jesus said, let us go to the other side, he's talking about crossing a lake. But it's really like the Sea of Galilee, right? And it was a large expanse of water. And the professional fishermen knew that any time it felt like it, there could be storms that would come up on the lake. And so they weren't even concerned when Jesus said, let's go to the other side, because Jesus was going to be with them. You know, when you got to do something, as long as you know that Jesus is on board, it enables you to stay calm. It enables you not to lose your mind. But here's the thing. When the storm rose up, they still weren't really freaking out because Jesus was right on board. But then the storm got fierce. It was like hurricane-style winds. The water started coming into the boat. And the disciples were like, wait a minute. We know a storm could rise up, but we expected that Jesus would handle it. And Jesus is asleep. What is up with that? Have you ever been in a situation where you just knew that Jesus was on board and the storm comes up and you're like, wait a minute, Jesus, no offense, so what's up with that? I've been doing what I'm supposed to do. I read my Bible. I study my Bible. I talk to you. I listen to you. I sing the songs of Zion. I sing praise songs. When my friends are playing stuff with words in it that I know that are not good words, I don't listen to that mess. I mean, I am 100% sold out on you and yet a storm is coming up in my life. What's up with that? But instead of saying what's up with that, we need to go, mm -mm, change works for me. Well, walk with me here. You see, when the disciples stepped up to Jesus and said, don't you care? Wake up. They were really not even saying Lord. They weren't recognizing him in his authority at that moment because they were upset. They called him teacher, right? They were like, look, teacher, get up, right? When you get upset, I mean when you really get upset, all that nice little Sunday school instruction you get can go out the window because you're upset that God didn't tell you exactly when the storm was coming, what the storm was going to look like, how long the storm was going to last. But see, here's the thing. When they say to Jesus, don't you care that we perish? They were actually saying, things are looking bad. We're about to be toast. Don't you care? But remember, Jesus said, let us go to the other side. He didn't say, let us drown in the Sea of Galilee. He didn't say, hey, let us meet our death. He said, let us go to the other side. And what that lets all of us know, no matter what kind of a storm, is going on in your life. 
life. If you know that Jesus is the captain of your soul, if you know he's the one on board, you don't have to know how long the storm is going to last. You don't even have to know what it's going to look like. All you have to know is that my God is fully in charge. My God is able to take me from point A to point B and change is going to work for me. I see our young people and I tell you we got the best, okay? And I know some other church might say ours are good too, but they will tell you yesterday we were hanging out in Urban Hill and somebody had the idea to have the children be on the stairs. Next thing I know, another church that was there, they were getting ready to take their picture a whole other way. But after our picture got taken, they were like, oh, can we just go ahead and get on the stairs? And I just had to laugh. I was like, you know what? That was a change. But First Baptist is a change setter, so it didn't surprise me. That it was and our young people continue to lead the way. But when you look at a storm, and you look at this storm, you understand that storms, when Mark is writing, first of all, going to the other side to Mark really symbolized his mission to the Gentiles. Because when they went from that point to the other side, that meant they were going to start bringing the gospel message to those who were non-Jewish folk. And Mark was writing that and making it clear. But when you look at the storm, you also see it can represent the chaos of the times. You know, young people, that's where we are in right now. We are in chaotic times. You come to church, you do the work to go Bible study, and you find when you go to school, when you start back, you're going to find that there's some young people who aren't as blessed as you. They don't go to church. They can only spell church. And so when they look at the news or they're going ahead and looking at their screens on the computer or on their phone, they're seeing all kinds of news stories and they're buying into it because nobody is there to tell them the good news of the gospel. You've got to tell it. So when you come to church, it's not just so that your dear dear can occupy, occupy space. When you come to church, it's because you want to get a lot in you so you can go ahead and give out and you can be the light of the world that God intends you to be. You got to be able to say that change works for me. You know it's a chaotic time when John goes to school as John and comes home as Jane. That is chaotic times. And the only way you know that our children are going to be safe from that is for you to tell them what the word of God says. No matter what storms come in your life, we've got to say that change works for me. And I told the young people last Sunday, if you had some challenges academically this past school year, and somebody tries to tell you, well, you know, you didn't do well last year, I guess you're going to do not well again, but this time at a higher level, you can turn around and tell them, uh-uh, you got to understand the God I serve. I was challenged last year. I started out with a D, and then I brought it up to a B. It may not have been where I wanted it to be, but the same God that showed me what I needed to know to elevate me to that level is the same God that promoted me to another level and will make my wings go even higher. You got to understand change works for me because no power in hell is going to stop me from being the person that God has created me to be. I know sometimes the change comes up. You want to go ahead and fight change. Sometimes the change you need to make is with the folk you're hanging with. Sometimes, you see, it's one thing for you to be able to hang with somebody, y'all are football fans together. You love baseball and basketball, all that's cool. But see, when you say to your friend, I gotta go to Bible study. I gotta go to Sunday schools. I gotta go to sleep early tonight, on Saturday night. And your friend says, you know what? You need to get over that. That's for little kids. You got to realize that, you know what? You, you, your own person. My parents don't make me go to bed early. I can stay up as late as I want to. And I don't have to go to church. Churches, you know what? Churches for old people anyway. And I ain't down with all of that stuff. I have to be spiritual. I don't have to deal with all of that stuff in church. Let me tell you something. You need to ditch that friend. You can pray for that friend. Absolutely. But anybody that is your friend, and you're a believer, and they kind of tell you to do something other than what the Word of God says, that's not a friend. Leave them alone. Young ladies, I tell y'all, I 
I say it again. I don't care how good a boy might look. First of all, if you're in school, he's got no more money than you do. I don't care how he tries to front it. Anything he's paying for, he's paying for because his parents are getting it for him. So don't you sit up there and be impressed when he goes, you know what, um, I think we're going to go out you know, to the movies or something like that. And you're going, oh, you're going to pay my way. He's so sweet. Get a grip, all right? What you want to do is understand that any young man who's not coming to you correct is not worthy of who you are as a child. Now, I know some of y'all are like, Kevin got the collar. Isn't he cute? I'm like, mm hmm, he's cute. But guess what? You're just starting to be interested in boys. So I don't want to hear anything about, this is my man. Let me show you his picture. The only man's picture you should be showing me better be your, your older brother, your daddy, or your grandfather. If it's not that, that ain't your man. All right? If you talk about, well, you know what, I got into it with my friend because she was stepping up to me because, you know, um, he likes me and they all upset. And I'm like, you know what, show me his picture. <laughs> and you look there and you go, okay, I know that God created everybody. But you can't seriously tell me that you're losing your mind over this. <laughs> you then have to go, okay, let me take my phone. because you understand who you are in Christ. You gotta understand you are a member of a royal priesthood. That means you gotta carry yourself a little bit differently. You can't be down in the dirt talking about, well, I'm just gonna dig a path to help them. Uh-uh, because when you get down in the dirt with somebody, what's gonna happen is that dirt gonna get right shifted. You're gonna find yourself sinking deeper in that dirt. In the meantime, you wonder why your parents and why your grandparents, why they just not over the moon over this person. It's because they've already walked where you are starting to go. They already can see. What you see is just a beautiful situation. They can see is a pile of dirt that needs a heavenly dirt. We've got to get to the point that we are bold enough to say, I'm going to do what God says. I don't care what the world tells me. I'm going to do what my Savior tells me to do. As a matter of fact, when change comes, when I'm getting ready to go into 10th grade next year, I don't care how many disputes I got into. I don't care how many times I got called into the principal's office. That is a past situation. When I go into sixth grade, I ought not be fighting like I might have done in earlier grades. Why? Because the more you get promoted, the more you understand that you are an older child in the Lord. That means that you don't have to go there and start fighting. Girls, why do you want to fight? Those of you whose families pay for you to have a manicure, that's not cheap. You get into a fight, you're breaking nails, splitting nails, nail polish, and chip. You want to leave that alone. Brothers, young boys, you don't want to have to get into a fight to prove who you are. The mere fact that you carry yourself as a prince because you're a child of the living God lets everybody know, don't mess with me. I'm too good to fight. The only fight I do is on my knees. I fight my battles with the only one who can win the fight. When somebody goes, oh, you a punk because you're not willing to fight me. No, I'm not a punk. I just don't want them to have to call spiritual 911 on you because my daddy is handling his business. You see, we've got to be able to say, as you go forward this summer, anybody that wants to get you off your path, you stay on that path. Right. And if a storm comes up, a storm of temptation, yeah. any kind of storm that comes up, you just say, wait a minute, Jesus is on board. I can picture Jesus sitting right there with me. 
And if you say, hmm, if I do this thing, is Jesus going to be happy? If the answer is Jesus going to give you one of those eye looks that you know that your parents can give you, you want to leave it alone. You want to do everything as unto the Lord. So when change happens in your life, when you get ready to get your new school clothes for this year, remember all the good things, that means you've got greater good things on the way. And anything that happened that you just didn't understand, that you wish hadn't happened, you can't undo it. But what you can do is say, going forward, change works for me. Going forward, I'm not afraid. Going forward, I'm going to say hallelujah in it. Going forward, I'm going to know the same God, the same God that rescued and told the storm to peace be still, told the devil to shut up, is the same God who is taking care of me. Remember, I told y'all young people, God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. So let change work for you. Don't you ever let anybody push you out of what it is you know you're supposed to do. All you gotta do is say, yeah, I don't care what you're trying to tell me. Change work for me.
I want them to know that you do what you're told to do. Because when you obey and do what you're told to do, that shows how great you are. And it shows how great you are becoming. See, a soldier or a Marine or a sailor is no less than a man because he obeys orders. He's a greater man. She's a greater woman because she takes orders and takes them away. Stand up straight. <laughs> Maybe there's someone 
one in here that came with these children, that brought these children.
lead us and guide us. Guide us with your Holy Spirit. With your Holy Spirit that abides inside of us. We said that abides. That abides inside of us. Right now. Right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For saving our souls. For saving our souls. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. To be better. To be better. Help us to grow. Help us to grow. Help us to lead. Help us to lead. Help us to make it. Help us to make it. Rebuke the devil. Rebuke the devil. Out of our mind. Out of our mind. And give us peace. Give us peace. Give us comfort. Give us comfort. Give us joy. Give us joy. Now, Lord. Now, Lord. We thank you for it. We thank you for it. Everything we ask. Everything we ask. In your name. In your name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Father, for the promises that you've made. Yeah. 
Thank you, Lord, that you just don't make promises. You keep promises. And as we leave from this place, we thank you that we're never separated from your presence because of the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Thank you. And it is now unto him who is able to keep you from falling, to present you faultless before his presence with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, be glory, honor, dominion, and power. His Lord now and forevermore. Let the church of the living God sing the Amen together.